Eric Jackson here, here to talk about the Mix Master. This is going to be the official Mix Master walkthrough. So stay with me and let's learn all about this boat. This boat right here, this is a blast from the past, but with all the new goodies, all the new design features that we've created over the years, all wrapped into one slicey package. All right, so you wanna know what the Mix Master is about. Maybe this is your first full deal. You've been asking for the walkthrough. Well, here it is. There's two sizes of this. It's the 7.0 and the 7.5. What do those numbers stand for? Absolutely nothing, other than they're generally in the seven foot range. The 7.0 is smaller than the 7.5. If you wanted me to put it in a small, medium, and large size, think of the 7.0 as kind of a small, medium-ish, and the 7.5 is medium, large-ish. How does that work for you? What size person a foot in it? Go on the website, you'll see the exact inseam. But basically, the way these slicey boats work, if you can squeeze yourself in there, you can paddle it. They're designed to be super low volume, and this boat is absolutely the lowest possible volume boat and the lowest volume boat for a slicey boat on the market today and probably will be forever. <laughs> Why is that? We made it absolutely as small as we could, took as much volume out and really contoured this boat around your body. Unlike uh, old school slicey boats, we gave ample knee room. You actually can get your knees in and out of this boat. It's also a lot easier to get in and out of, but if you'll notice, we really wrapped the cockpit, uh, right in front of the cockpit, the deck down tight. It actually follows your shins almost perfectly, and then there's just enough foot room to get your feet in and be comfortable. This boat, you're going to want to paddle with booties, um, socks, something like that. Big shoes, creek shoes, yeah, they're not going to work unless you're really small. If you're at the, at the upper end of this size, your feet are just going to perfectly fit in with uh, wetsuit booties is a good option. All right, what is the purpose of this boat? Like, what, is the, what does a mix master do? What a mix master does is it sits deep in the water with your body, if you're vertical, with your body right at water level. Being really low volume, it allows you to get vertical. If you've never been vertical before in your life, you can get vertical in a mix master. In fact, you can literally paddle forward, get some speed, lean forward, and paddle the boat into an ender. You don't even have to learn how to do the double pump. You can actually learn the bow stall just by doing what we call a plowing ender. Squirts, Ooh, look how slicey that stern is. Ooh, super low volume, really low parting line. Getting the boat vertical, not only can you get it vertical easy, but the long, in a lot of surface area, the long stern with a lot of surface area will, will balance on its stern for a long time. Shorter boats, when you get them vertical, there's not much surface area, so they pop out and fall over easy. The longer low volume stern with a lot of surface area, a lot more margin for error. It allows you to learn to pirouette or just stay in a stern stall for a longer period of time. That is why you've got a longer stern and lower volume. Now there's a, there's a lot of misconceptions about um, boats like this, and we'll get into some more advanced stuff like cartwheeling and holes and mystery moves and that type of thing. But there's a couple things I want to clear up about how a slicey boat works. I believe, and you'll, you'll find out when you try this, that a super low volume boat is the way to go for a slicey boat. Number one, it just makes everything easier. You want to get vertical, why not make it as easy as possible? It is almost impossible to make a lower volume bow and stern than we have on this boat that will get you down the river and float you. So this should be the easiest boat you've ever used to get vertical. So if you've never been vertical before, this is the boat that's going to allow you to learn uh, and get those skills up. Now if you already know how to get vertical, it's just going to be really easy. Now it is a different skill set actually than a modern freestyle kayak. A modern freestyle kayak is high volume and short. There's a lot of quick movements to get the, to get the boat to throw around. This is a much slower, more fluid experience and the skill set's different. So if you are currently really good at flat water cartwheeling, a rock star for example, it's going to take you a few tries to learn the skill and to, and to get comfortable doing it in a mix master. But then once you get it, you realize it's super easy. Now if you've never cartwheeled before in your life and you have to choose between a modern playboat like the rock star or the mix master, you will learn quicker in a mix master by far. All right, what are some of the, um, the features that come with this? Now, 
remember for your deciding there's a size number one a 70 is what I paddle I'm 165 pounds um, can I paddle the 75 absolutely the 75 will get me down the river easier that's why I would potentially choose a larger one if I'm gonna run something hard I'll choose a larger one the 75 if I want to just play and have a good time it's gonna be the 70 alright so this is my boat my size let's talk about the boat from bow to stern real quick just so you understand what each feature is and why we put it there and then how you can put it to use so the bow see the bow um, this is about as far as your feet will go for the tallest person notice we've got a fair amount of wing in front of the bow and this is a, almost a perfect wing shape slicey low parting line a symmetrical wing why that allows you to control cartwheels, it allows you to help mystery move, bow stall, pirouettes. Just, this is a controlling feature. We could have cut it off and made it shorter, but it would have made it more difficult to control the boat vertically. It would have made it harder to mystery move, it would have made it harder to bow stall as well. Of course we've got a GoPro mount so you can uh, capture all of your uh, fun action on the water, like cool mystery moves and stuff like that. Two grab handles, we've got the grab handles. Um, uh, and the bow is uh, longitudinal, it follows the, the, uh, follows the boat. Uh, this is important because you need to have room for your shins. This makes it possible to take even more volume out. If we had it sideways, we'd have to have a bigger bow. Um, now you'll notice that the boat wraps up and we, it comes, uh, stays low all the way up into the cockpit rim. This angle right here matches your shins. Uh, we, if we lowered the cockpit rim, it would actually take out a lot of foot room because it would push your foot feet forward. So having the cockpit height and this angle, this is as low volume as we could have and uh, keep the boat the length with, the, with that size foot room. All right, of course, you've got the dry Jackson Kayak cockpit rim. Uh, there's no, no screws anywhere around. It's super dry rim, so if you've got a good skirt and good gear, you'll stay dry all day long. We've got the Sherlock um, backband system. Our adjustable hip pads. We've got the foam butt pad with uh, five positions on your seat. And we'll discuss uh, seat uh, position and trim in a second. And then uh, moving back, you know, the, the back handle is sideways because we don't have to worry about uh, getting your, your legs in there. You'll notice there's just a little bit of a volume bubble here. This actually is just to try to balance out the bow to stern volume in such a way to make the cartwheels easier. We've got a slightly scooped out stern. Again, minimum amount of volume uh, with, with the parting line, the height it, it, it is. In order to get the volume down, we need to scoop it out a little bit. This again helps you bow or stern stall, helps you pirouette. It actually makes the boat want to turn when you're pirouetting and actually helps bring it around. All right, let's look at the hull real quick. Ooh, check this bad boy out. This is an awesome planing hull. Uh, I surfed the prototypes on Bus Eater this summer, unbelievable. Yes, you can do helixes, blunts, air screws, all that fun stuff. But just on the normal rivers that most people will be taking this down, it's awesome for front surfing. It carves really nice. You can learn to do carving blunts. Spins are easy. Surfing holes, this hull really surfs holes really nicely. So it's really smooth. It doesn't bounce you around. And it allows you to spin and control the, the boats on, or control the boat in a hole well. You'll notice that there's ample rocker. There's enough rocker um, from bow to stern that you can actually keep your, your ends out of the water when you're spinning in holes. But another really fun thing to do in this is blasting. Blasting holes where you paddle up and you wah, stand vertical in the hole. Being able to blast the hole requires enough uh, low volume, but also rocker really helps a lot. That way you can paddle up, lean back, a little sweep, and you're in a blast. If you haven't done blasting holes, whew, it's going to be one of your new favorite things. And of course, yes, you can do it on the bow and you can do it on the stern. All right. Outfitting wise, um, you've got two options. This comes with a foam block ready to go. If you need to adjust it, it's pre-cut. You can rip some foam out and that way for, if you're taller, uh, you could add more on top of it if you need to if you're super short. But also, it is happy feet ready. So if at any point you want to throw your happy feet in there, get a set of happy feet, put them in. The, the, the holes for the tubes are already drilled. And uh, that's a great option is the happy feet. Of course, the happy feet is the most comfortable and easiest to adjust. Uh, you can get those at your retailer as well. So your seat's adjustable five positions. 
you can adjust your seat, number one, based on fit. Your, ideally, your knee is right at the apex of this curve, so adjusting based on ergonomics is one way to adjust. There's enough, the boat's so low, low volume that you could be sitting way back or sitting way forward and still be able to cartwheel, bow stall, and stern stall. However, if you've got room to move around, you want to work on your bow stalls, move the seat forward. You want to work on stern squirts and balancing on your stern, move the seat back. Um, mystery moves, tr middle position is probably the best for that. Now your weight, a lot of people are like, what's the weight capacity, what weight is good? If you can fit in a boat and you're really heavy for the boat, it's going to make it easiest to get vertical and stall. Keep in mind that these boats are not super wide because we wanted to keep them narrow to keep them low volume. So the bigger the boat you're in, if you're in the 7.5, it's going to be easier to river run. If you're in the 7.0, it's going to be easier to get vertical. So you get to choose the performance characteristic you're looking for. I want to get vertical and get as crazy as I can in this boat, so I'm in the 7.0. All right, so you've heard about the Mix Master. I can't tell you how excited I am about it. You need to get one at your local dealer, take out their demo, slice up the river, and you're going to be a big fan. Yeah, let's take it out. I'm taking mine. <laughs>